Hey YouTubers, Mike Borders with the Mike Borders channel. Thank you for watching. It's an awesome summer day. We're getting the boat ready for this summer and we are going to perform a compression test in this video and get the readings on each cylinder. So let's do it. Safety first always. Two things to look for. Shift cable is in the neutral position and there is no key in the ignition and it is in the off position. As you can see right there. Here's the 25 horsepower two-stroke Mercury engine. And the first thing we want to do is hook up the garden hose with the muffs. On the lower portion of the outboard, you have the inlet vents that the water is sucked in by by the impeller to properly cool the engine. Make sure that these are clean and clear. Both sides. Grab the muffs and position the muffs over each vent. And the muffs will be properly positioned when you cannot see any portion of that inlet vent on either side of the lower unit. And the hose is properly positioned in a way that we're not going to trip over it and it's not near the prop. Now we have to start the engine and let it run at idle for five minutes and get it up to warm up temperature. Water's coming on. Water supply is at the engine now and since the water's there just verify that the muff did not shift off the vents. From here we're going to start the engine and something very important you need to verify. Once the engine starts make sure it's in neutral and you want to make sure that that water line is spraying out the top portion of the engine because that confirms that the impeller is pulling the water in and properly cooling your engine and then pushing it out at the top point. If that water does not come out turn your engine off immediately. All right, I'm going to hand it over to the captain. Howdy, mate. We're going to try this starting it again. It's in neutral. All right, there's that water right there. Again, if that water does not come out, turn the engine off immediately. That means your impeller is not pulling the water in and properly cooling the engine. That's not good. We're going to let this run. Get the engine warmed up. Turn the water off so you're not wasting any water. Back at the engine, the water supply has been cut. That'll all drain out. And to the top of the engine, we need to remove this cover. On the back side, you have that locking lever. Shift it down. You can remove this entire top cover and gain access to the top plug and the lower plug as you see here. At this point, we need to remove the spark plug boots and grab it right here at the base. Do not grab it here. You will rip this boot in two and then you'll have to buy new boots. Shift that aside. Lower boot off and shift that aside. Now we need to grab our socket and ratchet and remove both the top plug and the lower plug. Our specific size of plugs, 13, 16. Set that aside. Now both top and lower plugs are removed. Let's go grab the compression tester. You can rent this from your local AutoZone. It's about $40 and you pay the 40 and then you use it and then you return it and you get your $40 back. All right, the way this is going to work, here's an adapter. We are going to connect the adapter to the tip thread here and then we are going to hook this compression tester up to one of the cylinders. The adapter is on and I'm going to align the thread and slowly hand tighten this entire compression tester into place where the actual plug came out of. And from here, you wanna make sure that the gauge is zeroed out. This little pressure release switch here, push it in and verify that your needle is in the zero position. All right, the captain is going to turn the key over for about five seconds. And as he does that, I will be holding this gauge and watching that needle go up. So as you can see, our reading is 100, 105-ish. That looks really good. After you're finished cranking, let this sit. Make sure that that pressure stays in there. If that bleeds off, that means you have a small leak, and that would not be good. Let's go ahead and relieve the pressure, remove this from the lower cylinder, and hook it up to the top. All right, it's connected to the upper cylinder. Okay, so both the top and lower cylinders are almost dead alike, and that's what we want. That's good. Let's go ahead and relieve the pressure. At this point, I have removed the entire gauge from the engine, and I'm going to insert the plugs back in. Plugs are on and secure. Make sure they're tight, but don't over tighten them. Now reposition the boots back on the plugs. From here, let's grab the cover and put it back on and secure it. 
Cover is back on, secure it with the locking lever. We'll go ahead and remove the muffs. And the last thing, which is very important, the captain and I are going to raise the engine in the upright position and lock it into place so it is safe to transport to the boat launch. Here we go. Just like that, now it is locked and we can both walk away. The engine is locked in the upright position. And again, it is safe to transport to the boat launch.